Coming up on this episode of the new Fly Fisher, we're hooked up to a great rainbow trout here in Casper, Wyoming. We're guests of the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and the Crazy Rainbow Lodge. This big fish adventure is coming up next on the new Fly Fisher. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. Welcome to the North Platte River, a river that runs just over 700 miles and dissects the state of Wyoming. Running right through Casper, Wyoming, the North Platte is famous for its high number of cooperative fish. The North Platte really is the jewel in Wyoming's fly fishing crown. Just outside of Casper, on the bank of the North Platte River sits the Crazy Rainbow Lodge. Owners Blake Jackson and Brian Martin run a well-appointed guide service for guests of the lodge and their fly shop, The Ugly Bug. Blake, Brian, and their team of local professional guides highlight the best the North Platte has to offer. It's late August and we're just about perfect for the beginning of hopper season in Wyoming, thought of by many to be the most wonderful time of the year. Guiding us today is Ty Halleck, local artist and year-round fly fishing guide. Poppers will start a little later in the day, so we get warmed up, nymphing for rainbows, cutthroat, and cut bows. We're gonna be nymph fishing a little bit here today in Wyoming. We can use three flies. Okay. So we're running about four feet to our lead. Yep. Or it's actually 10. Yep. And today I'm running a uh, number one. Okay. They come in different sizes. We're going to try a little caddis because I've seen a bunch of caddis this morning. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a generic mayfly. And then uh, our bottom fly is this bigger trico. Okay. Um, so when I'm teaching people on this river to nymph fish, I usually say, you know, you guys have seen river runs through it where they're up here doing all this. We don't do that here because we've got weight and three flies. So basically, I tell people it's just like talking on an old school telephone. You know, thumb in the ear, pause, and hang up the phone. It's just here, hello, and hang up. That yeah. hello in your back cast is super important because it's getting everything to kind of flatten out behind you and goes forward. With three flies, you've got to do that because it's, it's a mess for a tangle, right? Yes, it's like especially here, the wind blows a lot, and if you're stopping your rod tip up high, one of those three flies is going to hit your rod tip you hear the clunk of death yep. and then you got to you know start over with your cast yep. so it's just here pause forward hard okay. and you want to come forward hard all the way with that thumb down okay so then um i usually tell them to do three good strips off the reel um we don't have to cast 25 35 feet here mm -hmm. it's usually i usually tell people it's a rod length away from your rod tip so we're only casting 10 to 20 feet okay um so when you bring it up you want to keep this side tight and when you go forward you go loose so it's tight loose tight loose gotcha tight loose you want to do it in two or three casts so, so no that, false casts yep so that's going to be yep. kind of our distance out okay and how that indicator is kind of making a wake right there the most important part of this river is your mend especially with all this free floating moss today if you're if you're uh dragging that indicator around you're just going to pick up moss okay so what i tell people is you want to keep that rod nice and still and just snap that tip over okay now a good mend is you want to actually hop that indicator just a little bit yep. but not a ton okay um what a lot of beginners do they, i call them zombie arms so, uh, they go back and forth and that just drags that indicator right into the boat
Yep, there he is. Fish. Yep, let him run. Perfect. Oh, nice fish. Nice one to start the day. Which what, wonder which fly it took? Uh, it took the caddis. What the? Nope. Middle one. Mayfly. And really, this is kind of like our average fish. Okay. Like, um, they run hard, especially this time of year. Boom, Sweet. just like that. So, our Textbook. average, yep, our average fish right here, 16, 17 inches. Uh, he did eat the middle one. Uh, male, you can tell it's a male because they have this little kite down here and the extended front face, a standard rainbow trout. And then when I release them, I usually put them back in the water, kind of let them on their own terms. Like I don't chuck them over. I let them make sure they're really swimming well. And then I just drop that net out from below them. Away you go. Cool, man. First fish of the day. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. And keep that rod tip nice and low. Because if we get low. in. Yep. There he goes. Oh, that's a better fish too. Yeah. Wow. High rod tip, fight him off the tip. Now with a three fly rig, you've got to really watch where your fly line is in relationship to the tip of your rod. Um, there's a barrier where the fly line meets the leader. And if you bring your fly line into that first eye of your, man, these are fish hot fish. <laughs> if you bring that fly, especially with fish like this, if you bring your fly line into that first eye and that fish takes a run like it is right now, you're going to lose it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> These are hot fish, man. Ty, yeah, this is awesome. crazy. Man. There you go. Nice. That's a good fish. Second cast, second fish. So we have about 4,000 fish per mile on the upper section. It drops as we go down a little bit, but it's still really high population of fish. We have uh, our average is about 17 to 18 inch rainbow. This river is really good for beginners because uh, we're not casting long distances. We're not, uh, you know, pitching directly at the bank, especially early in the spring. It's a good, nice short cast. Uh, you get a lot of shots throughout the day, um, a lot of eats. Um, so if you miss a few, it's not a big deal. Give me one more cast about three feet there, kind of right on that choppy water a little more. There you go, good. Now put just a little downstream check in it, not all the way down. You don't want to take your upstream. Yeah, you don't want to take your upstream drag and mend it so hard you have downstream drag. It's pretty light water, so just that little check to free it up. And then a lot of times right after that soft little mend down, you're gonna be mending right back up. We look bad. What is going on here? <laughs> nice. <laughs> just runs right back at you. But that was the perfect example of what we were just talking about. How when you mend, it puts a little bit of action on the fly and it's an enticer for that fish to eat. Jumps, runs. And your drag is set. It is. <laughs> it's like eight runs. And he's still not done. <laughs> no. Nice. Oh man, what a beautiful fish. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh. Nice. I mean, the muscle on that fish. As the day warms up, we decide to switch to a hopper dropper rig. Let's see if the fish are looking up. So when we're hopper fishing, you kind of want to angle a little bit downriver just so you get a longer, better drift. Um, 
Today they're eating a little faster water, so it's just kind of putting it right on them and having them eat. But um, with this afternoon wind, it does two things. It pushes live hoppers into the water. And then the other thing it does is create this little chop on top of the water where those fish feel a little bit more secure where they can move into the shallows and start eating hoppers on the surface. Yes! Hopper eat. Nice! <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it's difficult to get a hopper bite, but the, the stick with it, because it, it I'm speechless, man. That was awesome. <laughs> stick with it because the bounty is incredible. We just stopped for lunch, had a great sandwich, bite to eat, and the wind picked up. So we decided to continue with our hopper bite. And uh, this is it. Great rainbow on top. Perfect. In the moving water, right, eh, yeah. Ty? Yeah, and he came back down for it. Went past him and he ate it going downstream. They don't quit. They're all try. Now you have to watch these grass, don't you? Mm hmm They'll bury their nose in that stuff. It's a thick fish. Really stout from back to belly, huh? Mm -hmm. All muscle. There we go. Oh, look nice. at the color on this thing. Yeah. Awesome. That <laughs> thing's <laughs> so fat. Long arms, long arms. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Nice. Again in that faster water. <gasps> He's, He's in the boat! boat. Oh. <laughs> Does that count then? Yeah, that's I mean, a he, he technically fish. he was in the boat. <laughs> The drag free drift when you're hopper fishing is vital to emulate the ultimate demise of a grasshopper floating down this river. Um, anytime you have, have any, wow, anytime you have any drag on that hopper, it's an unnatural indication of a, uh, uh, of a fly versus a natural. So do your best to do a proper mending to keep that fly as natural as possible and you get to trick big bows big rainbows look every bit of this five weight and it's funny ty none of these fish have eaten the dropper they're all taking the hoppers mm -hmm. i swam right in that forest perfect nice. oh, stud rainbow Good morning from the North Platte River here in Wyoming, just outside of Casper. This guy is Blake Jackson. Blake, the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow are your babies, but this river really is where it's at. What's going on today? Gonna be a great day. Hopefully some hopper fishing later this afternoon. So this is late August and we're right at the beginning of the hopper season. Um, do we have a shot at, at, at fish taking off top today later on? Yeah, for sure. It Absolutely. should uh, should set up well. We've got a great hopper population this year, so yep. um, water's up, which kind of plays right into the, the, the perfect recipe for it. So the ugly bug and the crazy rainbow in September, if you've never fished hoppers in Wyoming, put it on your bucket list. Let's do this. Awesome. Hey Blake, how um, how you want me to fish this, uh, this river? This river's really dynamic. Um, how do you want me to fish hoppers today? Ideally, we're gonna quarter the cast downstream. Most of our strikes, I would assume, we're gonna need to be 30 to 40 feet away from the boat at a minimum. 
But quartering downstream, and ideally if we chuck it in pretty tight to the bank and give it a quick little mend as soon as it lands, it's going to set up and kind of ride down the current the way we're looking for it to, to ride. So do these, do these hoppers need to be dead drifted or can I skate them a bit? No, I mean, at times the skate can, can help, but for the majority of uh, the, good, the good eats we see, it's, it's really on the dead drift. So a nice, even, fluid, you know, same pace as the surface current is really what we're looking for. And where are these fish going to live? Are, they, are we going to find them sort of really tight to the banks? Are they going to undercut banks? Or are they relating to rocky structure? We're going to probably see a variety of everything. I think we'll see them come out of undercuts, probably come off some structure off the banks. Um, and there's a very good chance we'll see some, you know, out in the riffles or even on some slicks. Got him. Nicely done. Oh. Uh, we were just, Blake and I were just talking about, you know, we had a ton of shots at a lot of fish over in that last back pool and um, just couldn't convince one to eat. And I thought maybe it was because of, you know, as I did that mend, I sent out some ripples into the, into the pool, um, you know, but we decided to give them a bit of a break. Oh man, they dug down in this dog grass. down in the grass. Uh, give them a break and we found one down here. Downstream angle to it. Happily feeding and first cast to this fish, we find success. Well done. Thank you, sir. You have to work for them sometimes, but sometimes, every time, the reward is well worth the effort. Just amazing. Nice fish. All these fish are relating to the outside of the bank current seam. And Blake, that surprises you, how come? I mean, you know, generally when hopper fishing, you know, the hoppers are much more likely to be on the, on the inside edge. Well, yeah, because they get blown off the grass, right? Exactly, blown off the grass. They'd be on the inside edge closest to the bank and the fish would be targeting them there. But we've got, you know, a slight little breeze and some, obviously some decent current, but a lot of fish you know, are out 20 to 30 feet off the bank at times and uh, slamming hoppers out towards the center of the river. They do want down in that grass. They do, protection, right? Yep, cover protection. Nice. Barely get my hand around that. That's a cut bow, yeah. yeah Look at this. Got some cutthroat. See the, the gash in the throat there? Good fish. Great cut bow. You know, we talked a little bit about saltwater this morning and how, you know, there a lot of the, the saltwater techniques, a little few of the saltwater techniques transfer here. And that's what I did, man. I couldn't keep up with that fish with this mid arbor reel. So what I did was I bent my rod tip into the water so that the fly line stayed in and stayed tight. Good looking rainbow. So Blake, man, what a trial by fire here on the plat. You know, it's our first day. It's been fantastic so far. We caught a couple of rainbows. What's your best advice to people that might be considering coming to Casper, coming to the Ugly Bug Fly Shop um, for their first time fishing this water system? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a great experience. We kind of, you know, depending on what you're looking for, we can provide a lot of different things. This is a, a great uh, nymph fishery and then stuff like we're doing today that's about as technical a dry fly fishing as, uh, as you want to get, right? So um, we can, we can kind of cater a trip to just about whatever you're looking for. Right, so you don't, even if you're, you may be a beginner, never held a fly rod in your hand, this is a great spot to learn. I mean, you've got shot, there's 4,000 fish per mile here. And, you know, generally they're hungry. <laughs> yeah, hungry and big. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't, uh, don't expect or anticipate, you know, our average size fish being what it is and uh, the, the trophy potential that this river can hold at times. What is a trophy here? 
Well, it you know, really depends on species. I mean, I think anywhere in the world, you can catch a 20 inch rainbow. That's a, that's a phenomenal fish yep. and a really cool experience. But, yeah. but we often see trout pushing that 10 pound mark here. So wow. it's not uncommon for us to see fish pushing 30 inches at times. Speaking of seeing fish, did you see that right there? I did. There he is again. All right, that's good. One right inside about a foot off the bank. Crazy Rainbow Lodge, just out of Casper, Wyoming, is a family-style lodge that feels like home. Located on the banks of the North Platte River, the lodge sleeps eight anglers and has all the amenities for the ultimate in comfort and seclusion. There are a myriad of fisheries in the area, and this morning, Blake has something special in mind. Morning, Blake. Morning. <laughs> it's a little different than the North Platte River, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're going to uh, chase a little carp this morning. Carp? Yeah. On fly? On a fly. Should be a lot of fun. I've never done that. I, honestly, I've never done that before. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll find some big pods and and uh, try to convince them to eat a dry fly. Dry fly a carp. That's, what that's kind of carp goal. are they? Uh, both common and mirror carp. But cool. Majority of the fish on the surface are mirror carp. Caught tons of common carp conventionally. Never caught a mirror carp. Never caught a carp on fly. Well, let's do something different. <laughs> let's do it. You know, I never thought that I would be excited to catch carp, but here in central Wyoming, this is unbelievable. We're the only ones on the lake. It's slick calm, there's fish everywhere, and it's just like fishing saltwater. There really isn't any difference, just the salinity and species. <laughs> Good, strip, strip, easy. Strip, got him. Well done. Sweet. Oh, these things are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> he ate the dropper. Yeah. What's the What's the dropper, Blake? Uh, that dropper is just a little white bugger. They eat it as a little minnow or yeah, a little beadhead too, right? Yeah, little teeny beadhead bugger. I haven't even seen this thing yet. There's the leader. Yeah, on a, on a five weight, it's a, it's a chore. And they'll come up next to the boat and roll and generally take off one, you know, at least one more time. Okay. This is crazy. <laughs> we should have put a GPS on the boat to see how far it's towing us. Right. I haven't seen it yet, Blake. No, I, I saw a slight glimpse of the tail and that's been, <laughs> that's been it. This is just solid. It's raw weight. It's raw weight. <laughs> yep. And as soon as you put a hook into one of these fish, it's such a completely different feeling. It's a patience game, right? You get to the point where you want to get them in and you know, you can't rush it. Yeah. Normally I wouldn't be chasing them on a five weight either, but. No. But we are it does, here fishing trap. It, it does make it fun though. <sighs> Nicely done. Sweet, that is a huge <laughs> mirror carp. Hard to get out of the net. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. 12 pound mirror carp. All right. My carpy friend, you're ready to go. As the clouds move in, we decide to head back to the Platte to float through the town of Casper. Hey Blake, different technique today, fishing streamers. How do you want this ret retrieve to look for these fish? Yeah, I mean, ideally we'll throw it in nice and tight to the bank. I'm a big fan of a couple of good strips, kind of a strip, strip pause, let it fall off the shelf a little bit and then uh, go right back to the strip, strip pause. Often we get you know, the strike will come on the pause. So we decided to do something a little different this afternoon and nice rainbow head through Casper, Wyoming, right through downtown on the North Platte River. 
but we're stripping streamers today, not hoppers. And right away, good fish. Good healthy bow. Yeah. And no mistaking that hit. Nicely done, Mark. Thanks, Blake. All right, so first streamer fish of the day. Male, look at the kipe on his jaw. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to pinch my barb down and let him go. <laughs> Well done. That's a thick fish too. Yeah, it is. Keep it moving. Yeah, good looking boat. Nice, thanks Blake. So no matter what your fancy is here at the Ugly Bug in Crazy Rainbow Lodge, there's something for everybody. Streamers, hoppers, nymphing. Quick trail. release. Quick release. Good work. Awesome. Equipment is quite simple for fishing the North Platte River in Casper, Wyoming. Five and six weight rods with five and six weight floating weight forward lines. Leaders were nine foot tapered 3X leaders with 4X tippet for dry flies. That's it. This is our final day in Casper fishing with the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Lodge. Today, we have the pleasure of being guided by Addie Dees, a well-accomplished angler and guide unto her own right. Addie's choice? Poppers, of course. Perfect. Yep. Every day is a little bit different, and every guide fishes this river a little bit different. Right, yeah. Um, and every client's expectations are a little bit different. Of course. So I try and manage those expectations as I get to know them on the river that day and even yep. before the trip. Yeah, and you and I had a conversation at the shop a couple of days ago, and, and you know we talked about what those expe expectations were. And I think that's a very important part of, um, you know, me, not only, I mean, I'm not going to speak for you as a guide, mm -hmm. but as, as a client, you got to understand you know, how, how your guide fishes and, and how that day is going to shape up. So, sure. you know, awesome fish. Look at that. Nice work. The first one of the day. Fantastic. <laughs> it's a good one. Nice. Addy spotted that fish off this point and pointed it out to me. And sure enough, first drift through, sure success. I can't believe a system where the average size of rainbow is like 17 inches. It's pretty impressive. Sweet. Wow, what a jump. 
Whoa, again! Nice. Oh, these fish on them. are fantastic. Just amazing. Again, the dead drift is the key. Any movement on that hopper, other than the natural undulation of, of the rubber legs, and they will not go near it. We even had a fish just a little while ago come up and stare at it and turn around and leave. So practice your casting, be able to put it where you want to. August is the time to come to Wyoming and fish, especially with the ugly bug. Putting that rod to work. Yeah, it is. And you also have grass that you're dealing with, as you can clearly see. You need to keep those, keep those fish up high. Head up. Amazing. Whew, what a fish. What a fight. <laughs> right back right. to the bottom. <laughs> Thanks so much. You bet. What an unbelievable time we've had here just outside of Casper, Wyoming on the North Platte River. It has been absolutely unbelievable. I want to thank everybody at the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and of course at the Crazy Rainbow Lodge. It has been wonderful. You need to come here and do it for yourself. For everybody at the New Fly Fisher, my name is Mark Melnick. Thank you for watching. Remember, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. From everybody at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and we're gonna see you in the Midwest. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't wanna miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,